Contrary to popular belief, crayfish are not just mindless mud bugs roaming through the rivers on their own. In fact, they live in a strict social hierarchy where only the fittest prosper. They also experience different behaviors based on their social rank. Not so different from us, mammals. In this video, I will be covering the social hierarchies and behaviors of crayfish in the wild. Crayfish don't normally travel long distances, so the lakes and rivers they spawn in are usually their home for life. Within each community of crayfish, there is a hierarchy of dominance. Crayfish are one of the most aggressive crustaceans in our rivers, and with this kind of attitude, I think it'd be obvious that they wouldn't get along with each other. And they don't. Crayfish are prone to fighting each other, even if they are the same species. While many animals do practice this kind of infighting, it is usually during mating season when, with males fighting over females. In fact, crayfish do practice these kinds of fights over mates, but those fights don't seem that significant when to account for all their off-season battles. Crayfish judge the fittest by size and fighting ability, which the latter is also judged by size to some degree. In the crayfish world, bigger is almost always better. Studies show that crayfish with bigger claws win more fights, while being larger in size will intimidate other crayfish, therefore winning more fights and standoffs. Crayfish will go around fighting each other until a dominant crayfish is established. The dominant crayfish tends to be larger and more aggressive than its peers. And unlike many animals, crayfish don't care about gender. Males and females can both be dominant crayfish as long as they are big and win enough fights. Now, you might ask, what does a dominant crayfish do? Well, crayfish are highly territorial, so dominant crays are most likely going to be holding the most pristine piece of land around with the most resources available. Dominant crayfish are also harassers. That's right, they will go around fighting and harassing other crayfish either to maintain its dominance or just for fun. I mean, you, you really can't blame them, right? Now let's get into the behavior. Crayfish will actually exhibit different behaviors based on their battles. Crayfish that win more battles will only want to fight each other more and become more and more aggressive. While these dominant crayfish get all the fun, this affects the losers to the same degree, just much more negatively. Losing crayfish can experience serious psychological distress. They are much more submissive and, and can experience anxiety. Studies show crayfish actually have the hormones to experience anxiety, which for them is a serotonin called 5-HT. In dominating crayfish, levels of 5-HT in their brains were relatively low, but for losing crayfish, this hormone was very prevalent in their brains. Now, a note, when I say dominating crayfish, I mean winning crayfish that, can, that have won most of their battles, and when I say losing crayfish, I mean crayfish that lose most of their battles. They won't get too anxious if they lose a single battle, but if it becomes a pattern, they will start to experience serious stress, become submissive, and eventually end up with anxiety. Crayfish, in fact, experience these kinds of social harassment and can even become anxious over their harassers, just like us. Crayfish are truly interesting animals, and if you like them as much as I do, please click that like button to support more Crayfish awesomeness. This is Crayfish Obsession here, signing out. See you in the next one.